Hey there, you're looking kind of cute. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my other socials for more. Enjoy. Julian flipped through pages of the magazine, his eyes lingering on each carefully styled outfit. He paused, captivated by a full-page spread featuring a floral sundress that seemed to dance with life even in the static image. The way the fabric draped and flowed stirred something within him, a longing he couldn't quite articulate. Lost in thought, Julian didn't hear the approaching footsteps. The door creaked open, startling him from his reverie. Oh, I didn't realize you were home, sweetie. Julian's mother stood in the doorway, a basket of laundry balanced on her hip. He fumbled with the magazine, nearly dropping it in his haste to hide the page. Mom, I was just, I mean, I, she set the basket down and moved closer, curiosity piqued by his flustered reaction. What's got you so worked up? Let me see. Before Julian could protest, she gently took the magazine from his hands. Her eyes widened slightly as she saw the page he'd been admiring, but to his surprise, no judgment clouded her features. This is a beautiful dress, she mused, running a finger along the hem of the photographed garment. The pattern is lovely, isn't it? And look at how it cinches at the waist. That's good design right there. Julian blinked, unsure how to respond. You're, you're not mad? His mother looked up, genuine confusion on her face. Mad? Why on earth would I be mad? Because I was looking at, you know, girls' clothes. She chuckled softly, settling onto the edge of his bed. Oh, honey, there's nothing wrong with appreciating beautiful things, no matter who they're meant for. She patted the spot beside her, inviting him to sit. Come here, let's talk about this. Hesitantly, Julian joined her, his shoulders tense with lingering anxiety. Now, she began, her voice warm and free of judgment. What is it about these dresses that catches your eye? Julian swallowed hard, struggling to find the right words. I, I don't know. They just look so comfortable and pretty. The way they move, how soft they must feel. His mother nodded encouragingly. Hmm. And have you ever thought about how it might feel to wear something like that? The question hung in the air for a moment. Julian's heart raced as he considered whether to voice the thoughts he'd kept buried for so long. Sometimes, he admitted quietly, his eyes fixed on the floor. Is that, is that weird? Not at all, she assured him, placing a comforting hand on his back. Clothes are just fabric, after all. There's no reason they should be limited by gender. She paused, a thoughtful expression crossing her face. You know, I think I might have something you'd like to try on. Wait here. Before Julian could process what was happening, his mother had left the room. He heard her rummaging in her closet down the hall, and a few minutes later, she returned with a simple, flowing skirt in a deep forest green. This has always been a bit long on me, she explained, holding it up but I think it might be just right for you. Would you like to try it? Julian's breath caught in his throat. He reached out, his fingers brushing against the soft fabric. Can I? He whispered, barely able to believe this was happening. Of course, sweetheart. I'll step out and give you some privacy. Just call when you're ready. As the door closed behind her, Julian stood frozen for a moment, the skirt clutched in his hands. Then, with trembling fingers, he began to change. The material whispered against his skin as he pulled it on, adjusting it at his waist. He turned to look in the mirror and gasped softly. The skirt fell in gentle folds around his legs, swaying with every slight movement. It was unlike anything he'd ever experienced. He twirled experimentally, watching the fabric billow out around him. Mom? he called, his voice cracking slightly. You can come in now. The door opened and his mother's face lit up with a warm smile. Oh, Julian, you look wonderful, he blushed, smoothing his hands over the skirt. It feels right, he admitted, like I've been wearing the wrong clothes my whole life. His mother crossed the room and wrapped him in a tight hug. I'm so proud of you for being honest about who you are, she murmured. 
and I want you to know that I support you, no matter what. Tears pricked at Julian's eyes as he returned the embrace. Thanks, Mom. I... I don't know what to say. She pulled back, wiping a stray tear from his cheek. You don't have to say anything, but if you'd like, we could go shopping this weekend, get you some clothes that make you feel like yourself. Julian nodded eagerly, a weight lifting from his shoulders. I'd love that. The following Saturday found Julian and his mother at the local mall, arms laden with bags from various stores. They'd spent hours combing through racks of dresses, skirts, and blouses, with his mother offering advice on cuts and styles that would flatter his figure. As they made their way to the car, Julian couldn't stop smiling. I can't believe how many options there are, he marveled. And everything is so soft. His mother laughed, loading their purchases into the trunk. Just wait until you try on some of the things we bought. There's nothing quite like the feeling of silk against your skin. Julian blushed at the thought, but couldn't deny his excitement. As they drove home, he found himself daydreaming about his new wardrobe and the freedom it represented. Over the next few weeks, Julian's room underwent a transformation. His mother helped him clear out his old clothes, replacing them with his new feminine attire. They added a vanity where he could experiment with makeup and soft pastel curtains to frame his window. One afternoon, as Julian sat at his vanity, carefully applying mascara, his mother knocked on the door. Come in, he called, setting down the wand. She entered, carrying a small gift bag. I have something for you, she said, handing it to him with a smile. Julian opened it curiously, gasping when he saw what was inside. It was a delicate gold necklace with a small heart-shaped pendant. It was my grandmother's, his mother explained as she fastened it around his neck. I've been saving it for a special occasion, and I think this qualifies. Julian touched the pendant gently, overcome with emotion. It's beautiful, he whispered. Thank you so much. As he admired the necklace in the mirror, his mother rested her hands on his shoulders. You know, I've been thinking. Have you considered a new name? Something that feels more... You? The question took Julian by surprise. He'd been so focused on his outward appearance that he hadn't given much thought to his name. I, I'm not sure, he admitted. Do you think I should? His mother shrugged. It's entirely up to you, sweetheart. But if you want to explore that option, I'm here to help brainstorm. They spent the rest of the afternoon tossing around ideas, laughing at some of the more outrageous suggestions. In the end, Julian settled on Julia, a nod to his birth name, but with a feminine twist that felt right. As the weeks passed, Julia grew more confident in her new identity. She began wearing her feminine clothes around the house, reveling in the way they made her feel. Her mother's unwavering support was a constant source of strength, helping her navigate the complex emotions that came with such a significant change. One day, while out running errands, Julia ran into Lisa, a girl she'd known in high school. They'd never been close friends, but had always been friendly. Julian, Lisa called out, then immediately clapped a hand over her mouth. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I mean, is it still Julian? Julia felt a moment of panic, but took a deep breath and decided to be honest. Actually, it's Julia now, she said, her voice wavering slightly. I've made some changes recently. To her surprise, Lisa's face lit up with a warm smile. Julia, that's a beautiful name. You look amazing, by the way. That dress is gorgeous on you. Relief washed over Julia. Thank you, she said smoothing down the front of her floral sundress. It's all pretty new, but it feels right, Lisa nodded understandingly. Well, you seem happier than I ever remember seeing you in school. It suits you. She paused, then added, Hey, would you like to grab a coffee? Catch up a bit? Julia hesitated for a moment, then nodded. I'd love that. They made their way to a nearby cafe, settling into a cozy booth with their drinks. As they talked, Julia found herself opening up about her journey, 
surprised by how easy it was to confide in Lisa. I can't imagine how scary that must have been, Lisa said, reaching across the table to squeeze Julia's hand. But I'm so glad you're able to be your true self now. Julia felt a warmth bloom in her chest at Lisa's words. For the first time since her transformation, she felt truly seen and accepted by someone outside her family. As they parted ways, exchanging phone numbers and promises to meet up again soon, Julia couldn't help but feel a sense of hope for the future. She'd taken a huge step in embracing her true self, and the world hadn't come crashing down around her. In fact, it seemed brighter and full of possibilities. Over the next few months, Julia and Lisa's friendship blossomed. They met regularly for coffee, shopping trips, and movie nights. Lisa became a steadfast ally, offering advice on fashion and makeup, and standing up for Julia when they encountered the occasional narrow-minded individual. One evening, as they were lounging in Julia's room painting each other's nails, Lisa broached a subject they hadn't yet discussed. So, she began, carefully applying a shimmering pink polish to Julia's nails. Have you thought about dating at all? As Julia, I mean. Julia felt a flutter of nervous but pleasant anticipation in her stomach. I've thought about it, she admitted. But I'm not sure how to go about it. I mean, do I tell people up front? Wait until I know them better? What if they react badly? Lisa nodded sympathetically. Those are all valid concerns, but you know... There are people out there who will accept you for exactly who you are. You just have to be patient and true to yourself. Julia smiled gratefully at her friend. Thanks, Lisa. I don't know what I'd do without you. As Lisa finished Julia's nails, a comfortable silence fell between them. Julia found herself studying her friend's face, noticing the way her brow furrowed in concentration, the slight quirk of her lips as she focused on her task. A realization began to dawn on her, one that both excited and terrified her. Lisa, she said softly, her heart pounding. I think, I think I might like girls. Lisa looked up, her expression open and encouraging. Yeah? Julia nodded, her cheeks flushing. Yeah, is that, is that okay? Lisa set down the nail polish and took Julia's hands in hers, careful not to smudge the fresh polish. Of course it's okay. You're still you, no matter who you're attracted to. Tears welled up in Julia's eyes, overwhelmed by the acceptance. Thank you, she whispered. Lisa squeezed her hands gently. You know, she said, a hint of nervousness in her voice. I've been thinking lately that I might like girls too. Or at least one girl in particular. Julia's breath caught in her throat. Oh, she managed to say, her heart racing. Lisa nodded, her cheeks turning pink. Yeah, a girl who's brave and kind and absolutely beautiful inside and out. A girl who's sitting right in front of me. For a moment, Julia couldn't speak. Then, gathering her courage, she leaned forward and pressed a soft kiss to Lisa's lips. As they pulled apart, both girls were grinning, a mix of excitement and nervousness on their faces. Was that okay? Julia asked, suddenly shy. Lisa nodded emphatically. More than okay. It was perfect. They spent the rest of the evening talking. The sun began to set, casting a warm glow through Julia's curtains. She felt a sense of peace settle over her. For the first time in her life, everything felt right. She was true to herself, surrounded by love and acceptance, and embarking on a new adventure with someone who saw and appreciated her for who she truly was. As Lisa prepared to leave, Julia walked her to the door. They shared one last kiss goodnight, both glowing with happiness. See you tomorrow? Lisa asked, her hand lingering in Julia's. Julia nodded, unable to stop smiling. Definitely. Good night, Lisa. As she watched Lisa drive away, Julia leaned against the doorframe, her heart full. She thought back to that day months ago when her mother had caught her looking at dresses in a magazine. How far she'd come since then, how much she'd grown. She touched the heart-shaped pendant at her throat, a symbol of her mother's unwavering support. Then she glanced down at her freshly painted nails, 
a reminder of the new love blossoming in her life. With a contented sigh, Julia closed the door and made her way back to her room. As she got ready for bed, she caught sight of herself in the mirror. The person staring back at her was confident, happy, and unequivocally herself. Good night, Julia, she whispered to her reflection, a small smile playing on her lips. As she drifted off to sleep that night, Julia felt a sense of excitement for what the future might hold. She had discovered her true self, found acceptance and love, and was ready to face whatever challenges might come her way. For the first time in her life, she was truly, completely happy. The sun rose on a new day, casting a warm glow through Julia's pastel curtains. She stirred beneath her floral comforter, a smile already forming on her lips as memories of the previous evening flooded back. The softness of Lisa's lips, the warmth of her hands, the joy of finally being honest about her feelings. It all felt like a dream. Julia stretched languidly, her silk nightgown rustling against her skin. As she sat up, her gaze fell on the vanity across the room, where a framed photo of her and Lisa now stood proudly next to her makeup collection. It had been taken just a week ago at the park, both girls laughing as they shared an ice cream cone. The simple happiness captured in that moment made Julia's heart swell. She padded over to her closet, running her fingers along the hangers of dresses, skirts, and blouses that now filled the space. Each item represented a step in her journey, a piece of the puzzle that was her true self. She selected a flowing sundress in shades of lavender and periwinkle, holding it up to admire the way the fabric caught the morning light. As she dressed, Julia's thoughts drifted to the conversation she needed to have with her mother. While her mom had been incredibly supportive of her transition, they hadn't yet discussed Julia's orientation. The prospect was slightly nerve-wracking, but Julia felt a quiet confidence that hadn't been there before. Her mother's love had proven unconditional. Surely this wouldn't change that. Downstairs, the aroma of coffee and pancakes filled the air. Julia found her mother in the kitchen, humming softly as she flipped a golden brown pancake onto a waiting plate. Good morning, sweetheart, her mom said, turning to greet her with a warm smile. You're glowing today. Sleep well? Julia nodded, settling onto a stool at the kitchen island. I did, thanks. Um, mom, can we talk about something? Her mother's expression softened with concern. Of course, honey. What's on your mind? Taking a deep breath, Julia began. Well, you know, Lisa and I have gotten really close lately. She recounted the events of the previous evening, her voice growing stronger and more assured as she spoke. Her mother listened attentively, her face a picture of loving support. When Julia finished, her mother rounded the island and enveloped her in a tight hug. Oh, my darling girl, she murmured. I'm so happy for you. Lisa is a wonderful young woman, and I can see how much joy she brings you. Tears pricked at Julia's eyes as she returned the embrace. Thanks, Mom. I was worried you might think it was too much change all at once. Her mother pulled back, cupping Julia's face in her hands. Sweetheart, there's no timeline for discovering who you are. All that matters is that you're happy and true to yourself, and it's clear to me that you are. They shared a watery laugh, and Julia felt another weight lift from her shoulders. As they sat down to breakfast, the conversation flowed easily, filled with plans for the future and plenty of good-natured teasing about Julia's newfound romance. Later that morning, Julia met Lisa at their favorite coffee shop. The two girls sat close together in a cozy booth, their fingers intertwined on the table between them. So, I told my mom, Julia said, unable to keep the smile from her face. About us, I mean. Lisa's eyes widened. Yeah? How did it go? Amazingly. She was so supportive and happy for us. I don't know why I was even worried. Lisa squeezed her hand. That's wonderful, Jules. I'm so glad. They spent the next hour talking and laughing, occasionally stealing quick kisses when they thought no one was looking. As they left the coffee shop hand in hand, 
Julia felt a sense of rightness settle over her. This was who she was meant to be, who she had always been beneath the surface. The weeks that followed were joy and discovery. Julia and Lisa's relationship blossomed, each day bringing new experiences and deeper understanding. They went on picnics in the park, spent lazy afternoons watching movies, cuddled together on the couch, and shared long conversations about their hopes and dreams for the future. One particularly memorable evening, Lisa surprised Julia with a homemade dinner at her house. As they sat across from each other at the candlelit table, Julia marveled at how far she'd come. What are you thinking about? Lisa asked, noticing her girlfriend's contemplative expression. Julia smiled, reaching across the table to take Lisa's hand. Just everything. How different my life is now. How happy I am. How much of that happiness is because of you. Lisa blushed, her thumb tracing patterns on Julia's palm. You give me too much credit. You're the one who had the courage to be your true self. I'm just lucky enough to be along for the ride. As summer turned to fall, Julia faced a new challenge, returning to school as her authentic self. The thought of facing her classmates and teachers filled her with a mixture of excitement and anxiety. The night before the first day of school, Julia stood before her mirror, smoothing down the front of the outfit she'd chosen, a soft sweater dress in a rich burgundy, paired with black leggings and ankle boots. Her mother appeared in the doorway, a small gift box in her hands. I have something for you, she said, presenting the box to Julia. A little good luck charm for tomorrow. Julia opened it to find a delicate silver bracelet, a small transgender symbol charm dangling from the chain. Tears welled up in her eyes as her mother fastened it around her wrist. Remember, her mom said softly, you are strong, you are brave, and you are loved. No matter what happens tomorrow, you have a whole support system behind you. The next morning, Julia walked into school with her head held high, Lisa by her side. There were whispers and stares, of course, but also smiles and words of encouragement from friends and teachers who had known her before. As she settled into her first class, Julia felt a tap on her shoulder. She turned to see Mark, a boy she'd known since elementary school, but had never been particularly close to. Hey, he said, his voice low. I just wanted to say, you seem happier now. It's good to see. Julia blinked in surprise, then smiled. Thanks, Mark. I am happier. Throughout the day, similar moments of kindness and acceptance buoyed Julia's spirits. There were a few negative comments and confused looks, but they were far outweighed by the positive responses. By the time the final bell rang, Julia felt a sense of triumph. She'd faced one of her biggest fears and come out stronger on the other side. As she met Lisa by her locker, both girls couldn't stop grinning. You did it, Lisa said, pulling her into a hug. I'm so proud of you. Julia returned the embrace, feeling the warmth of Lisa's body against hers. We did it, she corrected. I couldn't have done it without you. In that moment, Julia knew with absolute certainty that she was exactly where she was meant to be, living as her true self and surrounded by people who loved her for who she was. The road ahead might not always be easy, but it was hers to travel, and she couldn't wait to see where it would lead. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out my other socials if you want more wonderful content, early access, behind the scenes, and more. All links down below.